Okay, so getting to know both of you, um, I guess let's start at the beginning. You know, you start a family, um, and you have two kids, and, and everything's going great, and then all of a sudden Monroe comes in the picture. So maybe just kind of get me up to speed on kind of what happened there. Yeah, sorry. You want to go? <laughs> go for it. Um, yeah, so you have, we had two kids, uh, had been in Korea for what, a year and a half probably? Year and a half, About yeah. a year and a half, and then July 1st, I think it was, she just had a, she'd been going through her checkups with Monroe. Yep. Um, and then July 1st, probably about what, the sixth, seventh checkup. Yeah. Uh, doctor in Korean, or I guess in Korean, started doing an echo. Mm -hmm. uh, just normal, everyday routine checkup, and noticed something was wrong with the blood flow in her heart. So everything, I wasn't there, but she can yeah. kind of feel you on it. Um, but it was a pretty stressful time, so I guess she can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it was just a routine ultrasound. Um, in Korea, they do them every appointment. So we had had six or seven prior to that, and everything had been fine. Right. Um, my mom had just flown over, so she wanted to see the baby, and we just found out it was a girl. Um, yeah. And then immediately everything stopped, and all the doctors ran out, and of course they're speaking a different language, which made it even harder. And yeah. speaking of, speaking of, speaking of <laughs> yeah, yep. hey, we'll go over there. Presley will read to you. Okay. Yeah, and pretty much from that moment mm -hmm. on, our whole world was turned upside down. Um, they started th throwing out just random words that they could speak in English. They said her heart's not right. Um, they said there's no blood flow, and of course, in that moment. I didn't know what to think because I had two perfectly healthy pregnancies prior right. um, and they said you need to see a specialist right away. So we, my mom and I went home to him and obviously from then on everything had changed. So we went to a specialist two days later, found out exactly what they thought she had and the kids and I were on a flight, what, six days later? No, back I think to, it was July 4th. It was like three days yeah, later. Yeah, three or four days later we were on a flight immediately back to home um, and then we got right into the Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. Everything kind of started from there, so and, and, it was uh, a whirlwind. Yeah, I imagine. And uh, the names of the other kids, I'm sorry. Presley and Palmer. Presley and Palmer, Presley. Palmer yep. I remember Presley, okay. Um, so then, uh, you know, you're trying to pitch in Korea. Mm -hmm. She's going back yeah. overseas. What is that whole experience like? Yeah, I think, you know, another aspect to this story is that I was having a really, really bad year. Okay. Um, just, I wasn't pitching well. Uh, few times thought I was going home just because of my poor performance and then you add this on top of it and then she leaves with the kids and I'm by myself for essentially what have been the last two and a half months of the season and uh, you're just trying to figure out what's gonna happen when you show up uh, you know that you're walking into like just a, a storm you know the second I get off the plane um, she's going to be born and she's going to go into you know a NICU and then have surgery a week later so like just trying to process all that emotion um, you know process like the grief uh, process loss uh, obviously she survived but it's more of the loss of the child that you thought you were going to have so you have to process all of these things you're doing it on your own she's doing it on her own you aren't together um, as a couple so that it was hard, but I think it gave us time, both of us time yeah. to kind of process on our own and then come together and share some of those emotions and those feelings that we had. I imagine that was tough for you as well, Ariel, that you realize, okay, mm -hmm. I have to leave. I have to go get the yep. best care possible. But yet, like Josh was sharing, he's struggling. You want to be mm -hmm. there for him, but you realize you've got your own battle. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it was a no-brainer to us that I had to go home. Um, Within days of being there, I had already visited two children's hospitals in Indiana um, and you know, picked one from there and kind of got to go through the process of what they expected when she was born. Obviously, they don't know. It was a total guess because everything was done when I was pregnant, but I kind of got to, like he said, I'm a planner. I'm a type A planner, and for me to be able to know what was coming and be able to process it all was huge. So we actually moved to Indianapolis and rented an apartment uh, I had to go when I was 36 weeks pregnant just so I was there and ready to go for when he got home. So, yeah, it was it was a lot in a what, five-month period that yeah. we had to, to process. And So what do you yeah. rely on? What do, what do both of you rely on in those dark hours or, or to try to get through? I think, I mean, I think our faith is, you know, kind of the bedrock foundation um, of... You know, like you, like we were talking earlier, like this is a worldview 
shattering experience. Um, all of the nice, tidy boxes we want to put our lives in, um, those go away. And, you know, the, the cliches and uh, the platitudes that people tell you, like, they don't, they don't work. Um, so we needed something that was constant, and that constant for us as a family is, you know, God's love as it's revealed in Jesus, um, knowing that whatever happened, she, everything was going to be okay. Um, and having this worldview where it's, you know, the world is not the way that it's supposed to be, but God is slowly moving towards this consummation where um, there's going to be no more tears, there's going to be no more death, um, and know ultimately that one day, probably not in this life, but in the next life, she will be healed and she will have a whole heart. So Ariel, when she's born, <clears throat> kind of what is going through your mind as a mom and just yeah. kind of the prognosis <laughs> and whatever? Um, I think, you know, I had in my mind, you know, kind of already set myself up for, okay, this is what's going to happen. And I thought I'll be fine. Like in my mind, I had mentally prepared for what I was going to see. Um, I had met a ton of other heart moms which is one reason we're so involved with so many heart families is it's so important to have other moms that have been through what you've been through that can kind of speak into you and pour into you. Um, so yeah, when she was born, um, what we saw her for it was, 30 seconds yeah, um, and they took her away immediately and she actually coded twice before they could even transport her. Um, they didn't tell us this till later, thank goodness. <laughs> But they had rushed her away, um, which I didn't expect that. I think I thought that I would be able to spend a little bit of time with her. Yeah. Um, I mean, so yeah, it was, yeah. I don't even know if I remember. It was, the first. The, I mean, the only thing that I remember about it was, it was like, she got to hold her for about 10 seconds. I got to hold her for about 10 seconds. And, she was and then about 10 doctors grabbed her and started doing tests on her. Um, and then they had told us like, we'll come back in an hour and we'll let you know when she goes over. Okay. Well, it was like an hour went by and we hadn't seen anybody. And then an hour and a half goes by and you don't see anybody. And then two hours go by. And like this process, it was probably about three hours mm -hmm. before somebody came back. And those three hours felt like oh. an eternity. Yeah. Um, so I think, what time do you have her? About five, four to- Like six. About six. Okay. And it was probably nine or 9.30 before they were able to get her stabilized, stable enough to transport, enough to transport her. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I can't even imagine because as a parent, you know, we uh, twins were a high risk pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, there were some complications, but nothing major, major. But what goes through your mind? What gets you through those points until they finally say, okay, she's going to be in the NICU for a while, but we're getting to a better spot how do, how do you get through that I think for me it all goes back to like you said our faith um, I mean don't get me wrong I have gone through the anger I was mad in the beginning that this was happening to us it was happening to our child and I think you do you have a lot of questions in your mind like why did these things happen and why you know why does a child have to go through these kind of things right. but at the end of the day for me it was we can't fix this mm. like doctors can't fix it completely they can put band-aids on it and Get them to survive longer and longer but at the end of the day we can't we can't fix their heart so to be able to put your child in the hands of these doctors in the hands of god and just say this is on you like you just kind of give it up and i think that for me was the biggest i can't we can't fix it and as a parent you want to fix everything so i think we just had to turn to our faith and put our faith in those doctors that they were gonna get her through so see the little yeah, here. You're thirsty? Yeah. Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Seems not big. No. And by every appearance, she looks normal. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Happy. yeah. It's crazy. True? Yeah. With a lot with crazy. a lot of attitude. With a lot of attitude, don't you, sissy? Oh. So yeah, she's doing great right now, aren't she's we? She's doing great. <laughs> yeah. So how much of a blessing is that, Josh, that as you hold her, that she's for all intents and purposes like any other kid yeah it's i mean unbelievable blessing um not knowing like where this was going to go when you first find out about it i mean obviously your mind goes to the absolute worst case scenario right um but to be able to have her here to be able to just see her interact with her brother and sister uh how much like life she brings to our family like i mean she 
she runs the family she and does. she knows it. <laughs> as much as the parents like yeah. yeah. they do. So. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> Good job, Monroe. <laughs> and when you, uh, and Ariel, I thought you put it well that, um, you know, yeah, like, because someone is a major league baseball player, mm-hmm. because someone's on television, because someone does whatever, yeah. it, it, they're still human. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. You have <clears throat> things that happen to you just like they happen mm-hmm. to anybody else. Is that maybe one of the messages in this is that um, when you talk to other heart kids, mm-hmm. heart parents, whatever, is that the message in all of this? Yeah, I mean, it, the message in all of it to me is that it can happen to anyone, and no one is. Yeah. No one can be excluded from pain, and no one. It can happen to anybody, and if it's not your kid, it can happen to you. It can happen to your parents, and I think just coming together as as parents of these heart kids to us has been huge. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. I mean, no amount of money, no amount of celebrity status is going to fix them. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're all in the same exact boat. You know fighting for your kid's life. So, I mean, it's all up to these doctors and these hospitals to kind of get you through, so. Yeah, and I think, you know, in a second, you know, she talked about just kind of the status. Like, I would I would give anything. Because as a, as a parent, as a dad, or a mom, all you want to do is help your kid. All you want to do is fix your kid, and you can't. So you have to in, then entrust her to doctors and nurses. And it's like, I mean, we would trade any of this to know that she was healthy. Like, I mean, there is not a price that we wouldn't pay if you could, but that's just not the reality of it. So you just take it, I think, day by day, and you're just grateful and you're thankful for each and every day that you do get to spend with her, um, with anybody, really, because, like she said, it can happen to anybody. Mm-hmm. So is um, it ironic that you became a better pitcher at the <laughs> same time, or is that I, something? I was talking with somebody yesterday about it, and I, I really don't. I think it's co- coincidence that, um, and there's a conversation that I remember vividly, and I think this was kind of like the turning point in my career. We're sitting in the hospital. She's probably three days out of surgery, okay. her first surgery. Okay. And I turn to her and I say, I think that if somebody were to come to me and say I couldn't play this game anymore, I would be okay. Um, as players, we hold on to this game so tightly um, because it's what we do that to get to that point was re- needed, like something like this, it's sad to say, but something like this needed to happen. And then from then on, it's like, you have a bad game, so what? You have a good game, so what? Like, it's just about that day in, day out process of going to the field, um, being grateful for that day, being thankful for that day. And then, you know, the rest, I guess you could say is history. Uh, I have the two best years of my career, um, just with that perspective change, I think. Mm-hmm. Ariel, maybe I'll ask the loaded question. <laughs> better pitcher, better husband, better father since all this happened? <laughs> well, he still doesn't pick up his clothes. But <laughs> <laughs> I do not. No, but I just think all around our marriage, our marriage transformed when this happened, you know, our family transformed. And I don't think you can go through something like this and come out the other end, not a changed person. I mean, like he said, every day is a blessing. And not that you don't realize it when you first have kids because I realize now how thankful I should be for my two healthy kids right. but in the moment you don't you're just you're trying to get through as a mom you're trying to get through these games you're mad because he's having bad games and just now everything is different and you do come home and you you think at the end of the day our kids are healthy we're healthy we're alive like it doesn't matter how you pitch it doesn't matter if you win or lose at the end of the day if you're healthy and you love one another that's pretty much all that matters so and isn't that a sports lesson, Josh, that sometimes everybody wants to be your friend, your buddy, and when things are going well, it's about you. Yeah. The low points show your true character. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes you don't know why you're going through it at the time. Yeah. I question things as well, in my yeah. opinion. But yet, it made you guys have a stronger marriage and have a stronger family. One of, yeah, one of, I think one of the hardest things about life in general is that a lot of the lessons we learn we learn like retrospectively. So we have to go through whatever it is and then look back Mm -hmm. and take the lesson out of whatever that experience is. Like a lot of times you don't know why you're going through something or why you're experiencing something. And really honestly, you might not ever find out why. And I think to change that question from, from why to how was important for us as a family is all right, 
how are we going to use this situation to strengthen our family? How are we going to use this seemingly horrible, horrible thing um, to find good in it? Mm -hmm. And I think that that question, that change in question, helped us uh, process a lot of this stuff. You know, how are we going to do it? What are we going to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen some awesome good come out of it. That's awesome. And it seems like, I mean, I, I don't want to pry too much, but does she have to take any meds or anything? She is on aspirin right now. So okay. just one med okay. now. Um, okay. We go to the doctor about every six months now. Okay. Um, she'll need future surgeries. We know okay. that. Um, okay. We don't know when. Yeah. We kind of just go, like we said, day to day. It's yeah. We're in a good we're in a good season of our life right now for her and for us and that could change in six months when we go back that could change in a couple months when we go back um, but we just take it a day at a time and thankful for the time she is healthy so and I always like to leave the platform or the, or the floor open to, to you guys for the final word and anything that you still want to get across or I didn't ask or any, anything and if you don't that's fine but I always like you guys to have the final word I don't know covered a lot so yeah you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're all tapped out yeah. that's I, mean, I think too. you know i think an important thing an important lesson for this yeah that we hit on a little bit earlier is that we're all human beings mm -hmm. um and we all have emotions and we all have feelings and that everybody is going through something right. and you might not know what that is um you might uh you might not feel like sharing that but you know, what we found out is that there are people that care about us. Um, there are people that are willing to listen. And, you know, you're not, the people aren't alone in whatever struggle it is that they're going through. Mm -hmm. So I think that for us was a, you know, yeah. she talked about the community of like heart moms, like there are people out there who care. Um, and you might not seem like it, but there are. Yeah. People praying for you guys yeah. that you probably had no idea mm -hmm. who yep. they were oh. from your past yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the community yeah. that came around us when we have been around was, and is still following her yeah. journey, has been such a blessing for us. And yeah. we're very, very thankful for that. And we want to extend that to any other heart family out there that if, if they need the prayer, if they need advice, that we are here as parents. I mean, have gone through it and can kind of show a little bit of what the life is in the early days and what it can be like in the future. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There is there hope. There can be, and there is hope. And I think that's important for people to remember. That's awesome. Yeah. And there's Preston. And there's Preston. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you say hi. You're a natural. <laughs> What's a natural? What's a natural? natural? It just comes easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> it just comes easy for you. Yeah. That's not pretty. What are you naturally gifted at? What are you good at? What are you good at? What do you like to do? Play. You're good at swimming. You're good at swimming. Yeah. Swimming. 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 I have a swimmer that's very good. My son is a swimmer. You like school, don't you? You like school? <laughs> you like art? See? I figured. I she like loves reading. Color. You like reading. You like reading. reading. I like your colorful shirt, so I knew art was involved. 